Okay, so this is a new drawing, a map of, called a map of human magnetism. Another way to look at it is the, uh, what, the frequency structure of human magnetism. And what that means is precisely how to map out uh, human magnetism in a more or less correct or accurate way in order to model it. So that frequency structure essentially is it's kind of like the template for do modeling human magnetism. So what I have here is kind of like a grid of the human body based on kind of a three node kind of network, if you will, and the the two uh, magnetic current flows uh, right here, north and south. So what you have is you have these two magnetic current flows, the north and the south interweaving with each other. And... Uh, this is kind of like would be the left and the right side of the body. Um, what you see here, the top kind of like three, well, not, well, it's not three nodes really, but this top line is the head. This next line is the uh, solar plexus chest area. And then the, the third line is the navel and the um, pelvis. Now, I drew it kind of like this. It's obviously, it doesn't show the right relationship in the head and so on but I think this is the basic idea you have three nodes here three nodes here and then then you have the three nodes you know and that would be well then you have three nodes for each of the arms legs so you have right here pelvis knee ankle you have shoulder uh, elbow wrist on this side I think it's more along the lines of magnetic currents so you have one side of the head you know, left and right side of the head, you know, right and left side of the head, uh, the, the, you know, the lungs, left and right, so on, and then the, the pelvis and the buttocks, left and right. So what you have, and then in the middle, you have these three kind of uh, centers of energy where, you know, that, that, have, that are known in the um, yogic and Taoist kind of things of the navel, the solar plexus, and the head. Now, um, how that actually works so this is this is how you map out human magnetism. You have these three nodes and you have the two magnetic currents and it's pretty much like this. So that's kind of like the template for it. Now um what it looks like roughly I made I may have made some wrong turns on this particular drawing. I'm sure I did. But uh as you can see each of the legs you can see these, you know, alternating more north and magnetic north and south magnetic uh currents uh you know waves or spins but i think this is the the best or closest approximation to what the human magnetome or the magnetic uh structure of the human being looks like and you see the same thing with the arms you have these north waves alternating south waves and like i said on in the upper part of the body i made a few wrong turns but there should be three nodes on this left side as well as three or I mean on the right side and then three nodes on the left side just like this drawing right here so you have a circle 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 and that's how it should be but so I made a few wrong turns but what's interesting is when you look at this center line that goes right up the middle you see that what holds that in place and gives it its structure and you can see it's a very tight interwoven structure is the fact that you have a magnetic spin on the you have these these magnetic these nodes represent uh, at least in the the main part of the body magnetic spins. So you have a very strong magnetic spin. You know three nodes of magnetic spin along the left side of the torso and the right side of the torso. Well, between those spins, you have this very tight network which forms the uh, pattern for the uh, spinal column, spinal cord, and so on. But what you would have is, again, you have these north-south spins going like this, and you have these three nodes. And so that's basically it. Um, like I said, you have north-south intertwining. This is the magnetome. Frequency structure of human magnetism. You have these three-node kind of uh, you know, frequency structure for it. And two magnetic current currents flows north and south it pretty much flows kind of like a double helix seemingly throughout the whole system but i've i've noted in other videos that there are other magnetic current flows as well 
including diagonal flows, diamond flows, and so on. But you know, to get the rough model or map of human magnetism, you just have to, you know, have this this network of these three nodes. Um, and map out that frequency structure and then just have the two magnetic currents alternating and then the question is well where 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 are the polarities where's north where's south and you know mapping out all of the magnetic turns if you will um, or magnetic current flows as they go throughout the bo body and all of the you know any kind of ways where say the magnetic current flow alternates, say, from the right side of the body to the left side of the body and then back again, or from the left side to the right, and then all, all the alternations along the, you know, the arms and the legs, and then, of course, this whole network of intertwining uh, north and south magnetic current flows that form and shape the spinal cord and column, and then there's questions about, like, well, how the heck do the ribs form, and, you know, and then, then there will probably be tight uh, networks along each of the arms in the middle and each of the legs in the middle that would help to understand precisely how and where and why all the bones form as they do. And like I said, there may be some you know general questions like, well, why do the ribs rib cage form the way it does? Why does the pelvis form the way it does? But the the closer we get to mapping out the the general pattern of it, which is these these nodal this nodal kind of frequency structure network and then these alternating magnetic currents or spins then we can you know figure out all the specifics so there you go that's human magnetism um that's about it we need a you know these are all static uh, two-dimensional models we really need dynamic three-dimensional models to really make sense of how this really works so anyway thanks